Hello everybody, welcome to HM Studio. In this video, we're gonna be talking about atmospheric effects in V-Ray, and this will be the end result of this tutorial. So without any further ado, let's start. For today's video, we're gonna be working with this file that is uh, provided by Evermotion, and you can simply download it from their website by going to the shop and selecting free product, and you can find it right here. Just add it to your cart and download all the files and extract them and you will be good to go. After opening the file, you can see that everything is there and you can basically follow along. Just before we start, we need to get rid of all the lights that they have in their files and also we're going to reset their render settings. So let's go to the top view, select the lights from here and select everything in the scene. Just because some of the objects are groups, we have to explode all the groups so we don't delete any of the objects and we can select them again and basically delete everything. Now let's go to the render settings by clicking here or pressing F10 on your keyboard. To reset everything, we can basically change the render engine to any of the render engines that you have and going back to V-Ray. Now let's make some adjustments and we can start. Let's go to the V-Ray tab and change the image sampler type to bucket. Mean shading rate to 24 and max up diffs to 10. Everything else can stay the same. We just need to add some render elements which will come in handy during this tutorial and we're good to go. Let's add a V-Ray atmosphere, a light mix and also back to beauty. Just make sure to enable separate emissive material in the light mix element and this one will make a separate layer for every self-illuminated material in your scene that makes it way easier to control them in the light mixer later on. Alright, let's use this layout and we're going to work on the camera too, so let's select that. I'm going to lock this viewport on the camera so I have the freedom to work with the left one as we go through the tutorial. Okay, there are two more adjustments that we need to do before we start and that's like getting rid of the environment and also the atmospheric effect which is the aerial perspective. We don't need it anymore, we're gonna get rid of it and we can start. Alright, we're gonna be working based on this reference image which I think can work since the environment is more or less looks the same. And first of all, we're gonna start with the lighting. You can see that we have a lot of sky in this reference image and to imitate that I'm gonna have to change the composition of this camera a little bit. So let's increase the height of the render a little bit and move the camera target like this so we have more or less the same amount of sky in the scene. To achieve this type of lighting it's actually easy to use a V-Ray sky but it's better to use an HDRI if you can find something similar to it. And I've actually found one from the No Emotion website and you can find the link into the description. It's actually free and you can download it so you can follow along. Okay, what I've done is that I've already loaded this texture as a V-Ray bitmap into my material editor and you should do the same. You cannot use normal bitmaps uh, and in order for this to work it must be a V-Ray bitmap. If I open it up from here you can see that it looks like this. Alright, let's drop a V-Ray dome light in the scene and plug this texture into its map slot. You can do it either by clicking here in the V-Ray menu or going into the Create tab, Lights, V-Ray, V-Ray Light and select the dome light type from here and just click anywhere in the scene. Alright, let's move it to somewhere less crowded then go to the Modify tab and just plug this texture into its map slot, like that. Let's make it instance and hit OK. We need to lock the texture to icon, so if we rotate the dome light, it rotates the texture as well. Ok, let's hit render and see what we got already. Just make sure to remove all of these adjustments from the base file as well. As you can see, render looks too dark and we can simply increase the multiplier in the dome light so we can get some more lights in the scene. 
I think it's too much, but let's add an exposure adjustment layer and decrease the highlight burn. Maybe we get a better result. I still think it's too much. Let's decrease the light intensity a little bit. Maybe five. Maybe eight. Yeah, I think it looks much better. After all, we're going to have the fog over the sky, so it's going to get a little bit darker later. Let's rotate this dome light to see if we can get a better background over here. Yeah, I think it's good. As you can see, the color of the sky is a little bit different than the reference image. So let's change this uh, texture to a color correction node, like this. Keep old map. I'm going to decrease the saturation a little bit and just play with the hue until I get a better result. Okay, I think it's close enough. Afterwards, we're going to adjust it a little bit more in Photoshop as well. As you can see, the foreground in the reference image is way brighter than what we have in our render. And the easiest way is to increase the intensity of the dome light. But if I do that, you can see that the sky is getting way brighter and it's almost blown out. And this method will not going to work for us. What we can do is to have two separated dome lights, one for the background and one for the illumination. So in order to do that, we're going to keep this one as our background. So it shouldn't be invisible, but we're going to disable all the other options here. So it doesn't affect anything else other than the background. Now let's make it a little bit darker, maybe seven. Okay. Now we can make a copy of this by holding shift and moving it. Let's make a copy, all right. Now in this one, I want it to be invisible, but I want it to affect everything else. So let's enable all the other options. Okay, now if I increase the multiplier on this one, it will only affect the illumination, not the background. I think something between 20 and 25 can work the best. Let's try. Yeah, I think 25 is the number we're looking for. Now let's take care of the atmospheric effect or the fog. Let's go to the rendering menu, select environment. And down here, we're going to add a V-Ray environment fog. In order for this to work, we're going to have to stop the render and run it again. But before I do that, I'm going to disable the displacement so it renders a little bit faster. Okay, now let's run the render and see what we have. As you can see, we already got a lot of fog in the scene. All right, three options are very important here. Fog color, fog distance, and fog height. Basically, the fog height is the height of the fog on the Z level. But in this case, in this file, I mean, no matter how low I go with the number, it seems not to work properly. And that's because our camera is below zero on the Z level. If I go to the left view, you can basically see what I mean. Okay, let's hide all the geometries. And you can basically see that the camera is below the zero. Okay, basically to fix this problem, we're gonna have to move it above the zero level on the z-axis. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, if we go back to the frame buffer, you can see that it's actually working now. All right, now let's adjust some numbers here. As I go higher with the fog height, you can see actually we're getting a lot more fog in the scene. See, if I go 10, it's almost at the camera level. And if I go 20, it's already over the camera. And as I go higher, the fog is getting thicker and thicker. Now that this fog, which is actually only five meters, is looking too thick, we can make it a little bit more clearer by giving it some distance from the camera by just in this number. As I'm going higher with this number, it gives us a little bit more of more distance and also a thinner or maybe clearer atmospheric effect. So let's gradually increase it until we more or less get the same result that we have 
and the reference image. I think we need to increase the fog height also. Let's go 30 meters. That looks better. Now let's give it more distance, maybe 10 meters. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I think this is working fine. But as you can see, the color of the fog is different. Here we have this cyanish kind of a vibe here. And in order to achieve that, we can basically just change the fog color from here. I can just pick it up from this image and we're getting the same result. You can just click here, drag it on your image and pick any color that you want from your reference image. Okay, as you can see, if I change it to red, we're getting a red color in the fog. And basically you can go with any other color that you want. But for this tutorial, I'm going to pick this color, which is our reference. And we're trying to get as close as possible to the reference image. Okay, I think it already looks good. And maybe we can just work with the adjustment layers a little bit and make it look closer to the reference image. Let's maybe increase the exposure a little bit, make it a bit brighter. Now I'm going to make it a bit warmer with the white balance. Now let's add a filmic tone map and see which one of them is going to work the best for us. I think this one looks cool, I just need to decrease the opacity a little bit. Okay, I think it looks much better. Let's add a color balance also and maybe adjust the colors as well. Okay, I think we already have a very good base here, but if you compare it to the reference image, the fog there looks way brighter. And we can imitate that with the fog emission here. Now if I go to the light mix and turn off the second uh, VRA dome light that we had, this one, you can see that everything turns black since we don't have any other light sources in the scene. Now if I copy this color here to the fog emission, we get a brighter scene since the fog itself is also illuminating the scene. Now if I turn off the dome light from here, you can see that we have another light source, which makes the whole scene a little bit brighter. Now depending on what you're trying to achieve, you can go ahead and pick any a random color that you want. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to select the same color that we have in the fog color slot. Let's make it a little bit more saturated though. Okay. Now let's turn the dome light on. And I think we can make it a bit darker. That means less illumination, by the way. Now that we have the fog in the scene, I think it looks a bit darker. So. I'm going to increase the dome light's intensity a little bit more. Okay, great. I know that we don't have any interior lights in the reference image, but why don't we add some? I think it makes it more interesting. Let's just go ahead and give it a try. So let's go to the top view and add a couple of disc lights inside the cabins. Okay, I think we need a lot more intensity. Let's open the V-Ray Light Lister 
and adjust their colors and intensity from here. So these are the three lights that we've added. For the first one, I'm going to enable the color temperature and going with 3200, which is a very warm color. Now let's increase the intensity until we get a good result. I'm going to put this region here so we can see the result a lot faster. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm going to do the same thing for the other two lights as well. Okay, I think they're looking good. Now if you go to the atmosphere element, you can see how these lights are affecting the fog. As you can see, it's very subtle now. But if you want any specific light source to have more influence on atmospheric effects, you can always select it. Go to the Modify tab and increase Affect Atmospherics from here. So for instance, if I use 10 for this light source, you can see the effect is way stronger. Okay guys, I think the image is looking good. We have covered basically everything and I'm just going to increase the render size and render this image out and we're going to do some post-production later on. I just forgot to change back the affect atmospheric on this light back to one in the video. Just make sure to do that before rendering. Okay guys, as you can see the render is finished and I already have it in Photoshop. We're not going to do any heavy post-production here. It's going to be just some color adjustments and uh, contrast and these type of things. So let's go ahead and right click on this layer and turn it into a smart object. Now go to the filter menu and select uh, camera raw filter. And we're going to the color mixer tab here. And let's adjust the sky color a little bit to get closer to the reference image. Okay, I think that's good enough. Okay, now let's go to the basic tab and make the shadows a bit darker. I'm going to give it a little bit of clarity as well. That's good enough. As you can see in the foreground color on the reference image, we have this yellowish tone and we can totally do that with a color balance. So let's add a color balance adjustments here and add a little bit of yellowish tonality to the shadows and also mid tones. Since I only want this to affect the foreground, I have to mask it with a gradient map. So let's go ahead and select the gradient tool from here. And as your mask is selected, just create a mask like this. Or maybe the other way around. Okay. Alright guys, I think it looks pretty cool and we're done here. If you liked the tutorial, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, it would be great if you follow the channel so you don't miss the next one. Okay, see you there. Bye-bye.